Jeannie and John Alcott welcome you to Word of Power broadcast today. This message can equip and empower you to achieve and receive what God has for you. We believe by the end of this teaching and time of prayer, you will feel the power of God in a greater way. You'll sense how near He is and how He desires to help you. As God's presence and anointing touches you, receive the miracles and answers waiting for you. We encourage you to contact us at the end of this broadcast. Jeannie and John are ready to pray in faith over your life. Now, receive a word of power. I'm so happy you could be a part of the broadcast today. Thank you so much for joining me. This is Jeannie Alcott. We are going to talk about what our stand is. I'm sure you've noticed how evident it is in our society that you have to take a stand. This isn't a time for waffling. Your beliefs are going to be challenged. And if you don't take a stand, they will be compromised. They'll be poured into this general pot of believing that says, It's okay. You can do something if that's what you want. Everything is allowable. In this day, we are called upon as much as the believers in the Bible days to show that we are tested and proven in our beliefs. And that means we have to take a stand and not compromise it. Don't compromise your stand. If you do, then you have no witness for yourself and who you are in Christ. Remember, you stand for a higher way of living. You stand for being in a position of anointing and spiritual authority. You stand for goodness and justice and righteousness. You stand for blessing and abundance. You're not one of the crowd who compromises what you know is good and right. There was a woman talking about how she had a teacher who taught her how to stand by her beliefs. She gave her a basic principle that guided her actions even into adulthood. The advice she gave, the teacher said, Keep your eyes on your own paper. When the students were tested, it was important to keep their eyes on their own paper and not compromise. So the day came when this young woman was tested in more ways than one. She was taking a test in school, and as she began completing the answers, she had this sensation that someone was watching her. So all of a sudden she turned her head, and a friend of hers who sat right behind her was watching. So he winked at her and whispered, I hope you study for this test. She was hoping he was joking, but to make sure, she turned back around and hovered over her answer sheet even more. So then the friend behind her whispered, I can't see. That's when she had a choice to make. What could she do? She knew as a believer in Christ, this behavior went against her beliefs. It would compromise her stand in what she knew was right. Plus, after all, she had studied hard for this test and her friend had not. Why should he sponge off her hard work? So she made the choice to curl her arm around her answers. And that's when the real devil angel question started. You know, the old picture of the devil on one shoulder and an angel on the other. And one is saying, he's your friend. And what are friends for? And the other said, you know, it's wrong. Then came the opposing thought. But he'll think you're a snob. He'll think you're self-righteous. We all have those same kinds of back and forth types of questions, no matter what age we are. We struggle to know which way to go and what is considered a compromise to what our standard is in our work environment, in our relationships, concerning morality, our finances, taxes, maintaining truth, repeating stories. So many times we have the opportunity to show we've been tested and proven. We won't compromise our stand. That's where the real reward comes from God. When He sees that we're tested and proven, that's when we're given more. We're taken higher, blessed in a greater way. We can flow in his favor. Oh yes, God rewards the one who is tested and proven. So as this girl was having this question and answer session inside herself, she knew she must do what was right, even if it made her friend mad. For the rest of the test, she guarded her paper so he couldn't cheat. When it was over, she turned around and her friend was glaring at her. He was mad. At first, she felt guilty for not helping him. But then all of a sudden that emotion changed. She felt anger. She realized he had no right to make her feel guilty. But instead of taking revenge, she once again stood by her beliefs. She was going to overcome evil by doing good, according to Romans chapter 12. So she said to her friend, Sorry, but you know me well enough to know how I feel about cheating. But maybe I could help you study before the next test. That dispelled the anger between them. Her friend said, okay, I'll give it a try. I never would have thought of that answer. It showed her stand and yet reached out to him in a spiritual way to help him. So she was tested and proven both ways, not to compromise to cheat and being willing to forgive and help someone. 
tested and proven. You know, if we're not careful, we can just be swept into compromise. There's so much of it around us right now. And it's even to the point that some think if you don't compromise, then you're doing wrong. Twisted thinking by Satan. He makes the Christians appear to be the bad people who won't participate in what others are doing. If we have ever been called upon not to compromise our stand, this is the day. That's why we're given this advice in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. That scripture says, Test and prove all things until you recognize what is good. To that, hold fast. Another version puts it this way, Don't be gullible. Check out everything. Test and prove everything. Don't be gullible. Don't be smooth-talked by Satan. If we are, then that's when we can wake up one day and realize that we have foregone the very foundation on which we stand. In an effort to merge into what's accepted by others, we have eroded the foundation that makes us strong and mature and prosperous in God. You see, when you make yourself aware of the strategies and deceits going around, you're halfway to victory. It's being aware of the traps and how the devil sets the traps that helps you not to fall into them. Here's some examples. Being aware of how a wrong relationship can evolve. That can help you stop it before it ever gets to that point. Being aware of how your life can be destroyed by addiction can help you avoid that trap. Being aware of what a bad diet does can help you work towards a good one. Knowing what giving into anger does can cause you to exercise patience and mercy. Understanding what fear does can help you stand in faith. See, you're always halfway there when you are aware. This is why that same scripture says, for us to keep awake, alert, watchful, cautious, and on our guard. If you're going to stand tested and proven before God, then you must test and prove what's around you. Don't just accept it as okay so that you can be accepted by others or so you can fulfill a desire. Refuse to compromise your stand. This is when you can help people come into a better way in God. And after all, that's what we really want, for others to experience a greater path in God. And sometimes that may mean a relationship has to be severed. I can remember a business associate that many years ago, John and I got to know his wife and him. Our companies did business together, and so over time we got to know them. Now, he knew our stand and the kind of life we had in God. But as we got to know them better, he was always presenting ideas to us of what we could do for entertainment and having fun together. But many times the suggestions involved going places that we didn't feel comfortable being because of the environment or the kind of entertainment he wanted wasn't what we considered appropriate for Christians. It seemed there was always this pull to take us down to his beliefs instead of honoring ours. We had to keep saying no. And then I realized I was putting up with this far too much time. Finally, we did what that scripture said. We stopped being so accommodating at hearing his suggestions. When we realized, even though we said no so many times, that he was just going to keep trying to get us to come to his way, we severed that relationship. I'm sorry we didn't earlier. But I learned from that. Don't allow people to push on you their ways, their beliefs, what they think is right. Don't be gullible as God's word said. Test and prove what is good, and then hold fast to it. It doesn't say, hold fast to your acquaintances, your friends, even your extended family. It says to hold fast to what is good in God. That's where your stand should be. You are tested and proven in Him, and that's where you're going to stay. No friendship or family member or co-worker should be allowed to take you away from the good things God has for you. If you compromise, you hurt your calling, your anointing, your relationship in God. My goodness, those are high prices to pay to keep a friend or to satisfy an urge or to be accepted by others. Instead, see yourself full of the strength and integrity and goodness of God. You are tested and proven. You have a greater calling. You have greater anointing. Your relationship in God is greater. That's how you need to see yourself. Therefore, you can walk in the rewards of what God has for you. You can do it. Believe that God has made you able to withstand it and receive the reward. Right now, I feel he's saying that he has his hand of approval on you. Ooh, you needed to hear that in your spirit. He has seen your stand, and in spite of how the devil has tried to get you to compromise, you have reached out to God for the strength to withstand him. So here's what you're receiving now from the hand of God. He's giving you greater boldness, ability to answer others, more resources, 
putting you in a position in the sight of others that will be elevated. So receive those words from Him as we go into prayer and we express our hearts to Him. We're going to show God we won't compromise, but we stand for Him. Oh, we do, God. We do stand for You and Your ways. Walking in Your ways is so important to us. We never want to compromise what You have for our lives. So I pray right now that my friend will take in the words that you have spoken over them. No matter what they feel or think, they are tested and proven in you. And as they continue to walk in your power and desire your ways, you're giving them just what you said. Greater boldness, the ability to come up with answers, more resources, a position in the sight of others that will be elevated. They're receiving great reward because they are your tested and proven one, the one who desires to become all you have for them. And now we believe, as they have laid bare their heart and soul before you, you are holding them up. We believe for every need to be met, they can receive the miracle you have for them. Oh, you're moving in their life. You are restoring and helping and delivering them. We believe it in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. I tell you, God doesn't mess around when He speaks over your life. He just announces flat out what's going to happen. He said you can walk in that boldness and position and the resources He's promised. And John and I are here to help you do it. This is why God has called us and anointed us to be a part of your life. So get in touch with us. Share how we can pray over you. We'll speak God's word over every part of your life. Every experience you share with us, we take before Him in serious intercession and prayer. So let us hear from you soon. Then we'll write to you and we'll give you words from God's Spirit to help you. Okay, here's our spiritual power line. Go around speaking these words out to God. Do it from a heart of faith and then watch Him fulfill these words. Keep saying, I'm tested and proven. I'm tested and proven. That is you. That's who you are. You are tested and proven before God. And because of it, you can walk into so many good things He has for you. So to help you do that, we want to send this message to you. The name of it is, You've Been Tested and Proven. We're going to send you all five parts of it and the prayer times. Just request offer number AM834. That's 834. We can send you a CD for a gift of $8 into the ministry. Or you can download it from our website for a gift of $5. Just call or write or go to alcottministries.org. That's A-L-C-O-T-T ministries dot O-R-G. And remember, these messages are not always available, so be sure to request it soon. And thank you for joining John and me as we give into Alcop Ministries. We also encourage you to catch our videos. These are just short words, but oh, they have so much power in them. They can inspire your life because God can speak to you in them. So catch these videos on our website, youtube.com or Facebook. Join me again tomorrow. You can sense how God is speaking to your spirit. He wants to impart to you what can give you a better life. So I can't wait to be together. This is Jeannie Alcott. God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. We believe God's spirit is moving in a mighty way. So don't miss the opportunity for Jeannie and John to pray over your life in a personal way. As you share with them, they will intercede by faith for you to receive all God has for you. Call 918 459-9191 or write to Alcott Ministries, Post Office Box 3400, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma 74013 or go to our website at alcottministries.org That's A-L-C-O-T-T ministries.org There you can also listen to Word of Power broadcasts as well as request special gift offers and be blessed by devotionals. Now, we encourage you to get a copy of this message and give a gift into God's work. Then, expect Him to grow your giving into wonderful miracles. Be with us next time for a Word of Power.